Hey everyone, so previously we finished off with the interactions for the map visual. Now you know how to create one and how to interact with it, it's time to go through the formatting options. And in this video, we're going to be going through the node settings tab for the map visual. So as always, within the sample report, you already have a pre-built examples that you can just explore. But for us, we're going to go into the training view and actually build the chart from scratch. And I'm also going to go through all the settings so you know how to apply them. So first things first, I'm going to add an instance of the map visual. There we go. I'm going to resize it. And I'm also going to disable the background and the title. I'm not going to be using those. As for the chart setup itself, I'm going to be adding a latitude, a longitude, and I'm also going to add value right here. And if you scroll down right here, we can see category. And here I'm going to add attribute. The reason why I'm adding value and attribute is because afterwards I'm also going to be using pie charts on the notes. So these features and fields that I used are actually necessary for those to be active. Now, if we go into the visual setup itself, we can open up node settings here and we can see that by default, node clustering is enabled. If you want to disable it, that's also pretty simple. Just disable the toggle right here. In my case, you can see it kind of starts to look a little bit like a rainbow, but that's because I have multiple points in a single location. So the colors and the nodes are just starting to overlap with each other. Now, if we enable it back again, we can see that we have some additional settings that are specific to the node clusters themselves. One of those is clustering node distance. What you can define here is the distance in pixels before the nodes are getting split up into separate entities. So for example, if I increase this to something like 80, you can see that I have less number of clusters, but the cluster size itself is actually bigger. Now, the next setting is max clustering zoom level. And this is actually a really important setting that you can utilize afterwards. The setting allows you to define the max clustering zoom level, which means that by defining this level and when you exceed it by zooming into the visual, you actually disable the clustering capabilities and you switch into the view mode of a single node. When you have single nodes, you also have additional capabilities that we're going to be talking about a little bit later. Now, next setting that you have here is a toggle for aggregated node highlight. Once you activate it, what happens is you can hover over the cluster and it actually showcases you the area from which it's taking the nodes. If I disable it, you can see that hovering over these nodes doesn't showcase me anything. Now, next one is going to be a shape. So you can define the shape for the cluster itself. And some of the options that you have here are circle, rectangle, droplet, rhombus, and also a diamond. Now, if we go into the color mode, the clusters have two color modes. You have fixed, so you can define specifically what color to use for the fill color and what color you want to use for the outline. You can, of course, further customize also the opacities for it and some few other settings. The other option is no fill. This means that, for example, you don't want to have any fill color for the cluster itself, but let's say you just want to have an outline for it. So here you just have a lot of these flexibilities on how to achieve interesting results. Now, if we go back to the fixed color mode, you can see, like I mentioned, you have your fill color, fill color opacity. You can enable outlines and customize those. Afterwards, you have your min and max node radius. What these settings do is they allow you to essentially size the nodes based on the value that you have provided. And here you can determine the min max boundaries of those radiuses. One interesting thing that you can do here is you can actually also get a reverse behavior. What I mean by that is if you switch around, let's say minimum is going to be 30 and the maximum is going to be 10. What you see here is that essentially nodes that have less value are actually going to be bigger than the nodes that have higher value. So this is just something to keep in mind. What I'm going to do here is switch it back to 10 and 30. There we go. Now, few settings that we're going to be skipping in this video are going to be regarding the value labels. That's because those are going to be covered in the next video. Now, few other things that you can still customize here is, for example, what happens when you right click on a node. So for example, by default, when I right click, I call out a tooltip, but you can also change this to call out Power BI context menu. What this does is whenever you're using, for example, single nodes, you can also initialize a drill through capability. Now we're going to change this back to the default context menu, and we're going to also enable pie charts on the nodes. 
once I do this, you can see that automatically I have all the categories that I previously provided right here in the attribute. And I have the value by which the categories are getting their size. So if we go into the notes setting, let's scroll back down to the Pi itself. There we go. You can see that we have essentially similar customization options to what the regular donut chart has. Now, one limitation that it currently has is that it only supports one level. Going forward, we're also going to be adding ability to do a drill down, so essentially to have a multi-layer donut. Now, what you can do here is you can enable or disable the others. So for example, right now it's enabled, but the number of slices is rather high. That's why you don't see it. If you want to use the others, for example, and see it in action, let's change the number of slices to not 30, but three. There we go. So you can see now we have the top three contributors plus the other slice on which we can click and explore the rest of the categories. So it's something to keep in mind if you want to have a little bit different use case where you want to showcase something new to your end users. Now we're going to turn this back to 15 and we're going to go through the additional settings that we have here. So data sorting. By definition, we're always trying to follow best data visualization rules, which means that the donut itself is going to have a defined starting location, which is going to be at 12 o'clock or north point. Now, the order of the sorting is going to be descending. So starting from the highest value on a clockwise rotation, we're going down with each single slice. So that always when you create a donut, you have a particular way on how to read it, which is easy for the end user. Now, going forward, we also have the capabilities of providing tooltips for the donut slices itself. So for example, if I hover over, you can see it shows me motorcycles. If I disable the tooltip and now I hover over, it doesn't have that callout anymore. So it's something to have or not have completely depends on you. You can also customize the tooltip for those slices. You can have custom tooltip, which was the one that you saw right now, or you can turn it into a Power BI native tooltip. Now, last settings that we have here are going to be regarding the fill or the coloring options. So for the fill mode, by default, you're going to have solid fill. The other two options are going to be gradient to a derived color or gradient to a single color. In gradient to a derived color, you're essentially playing around with hue, lightness, and saturation settings. Whereas if you change this to a single color, you're primarily working with the color itself and then just defining the outer opacity and starting locations for those gradients. Now, something that I wanted to also cover is what happens when you're using single nodes, because for single nodes, you do have some additional customization. So for that, what I'm going to be doing is I'm actually going to go to the main page and I'm going to open up the switch for single nodes. So right here, you can see that you can also enable images, you can have auras, you can have different shapes for them. That is because if you think about nodes and locations and what clusters do, when you have single nodes, you have all the necessary information for that particular node. Whereas if you enable clustering, you can't really define which shape, which image, or which color has to be used because you might have multiple of them. So if we go into the formatting option itself, so let's go here, select the visual, formatting options, node settings. So you can see that if I have disabled the node cluster itself act under the color modes. So previously when we have clusters, we had only no fill or fixed. When you have single colors, you can have either auto or dynamic. The difference between these two is that auto essentially just automatically assigns a color to each unique category, whereas the dynamic one reads the values from the data. In this case, I have it set on dynamic. And if I go to the fields, you can see that right here, I have my color field. So if I remove this, these are going to be just one blank color because I'm not defining anything else through the data. All right, that's going to be it for the node settings, and I'll see you in the next video.